time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening. This is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury, and Mr. Henry Hazlitt, editor of the Freeman and contributing editor of Newsweek magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Dr. Wellington Koo, ambassador from China to the United States. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Dr. Koo, you've been the ambassador of your country to the United States since 1946, I believe, but you were no stranger even then. I don't want to embarrass you, but I think a lot of our <coughs> chronoscope audience would be happy to know about your brilliant career at Columbia University and uh, where you edited The Spectator, and I think you ran the debating team and was made a member of the Phi Beta Kappa and so on. And then at the age, I think, of about 27, you began to be an envoy of your country, and you were represented the, your country here in the United States. You've been an ambassador to France and to Great Britain as well as here. You've served as the country's prime minister, as an acting prime minister one time, I think, finance minister, and you've had such a wide-ranging experience in international affairs that I hardly know of any other man alive who could equal it, certainly none who could surpass it. So I'd like to talk to you tonight about the state of the world, and I thought perhaps it might be best to begin with conditions on Formosa, where your government is now <coughs> has its seat in power. Uh, there have been rumors that the position of the government there, the Chiang Kai-shek government, is deteriorating. Now, what's the real truth of the situation there? Well, what you have heard, Mr. Hatton, it is not true. It has not deteriorated. It has, on the other hand, improved politically, morally, economically, and militarily. We have uh, completed a program of the free elections of the, of the uh, local and provincial officials. We have uh, uh, carried almost uh, far, uh, a balanced uh, budget now, which is a great achievement with the aid uh, from the United States. And uh, we have raised uh, the morale of the combat troops. And uh, we have, generally speaking, raised the spirit of the people for Mosa in their determination. Would you be able to protect the country against any invasion? Be likely to be launched from the mainland, do you think? Uh, the, uh, are we able to... to resist uh, an invasion, an attempted invasion? I think we, I think we are, we are. Yes. Uh, we can, uh, especially as uh, we have the uh, support of the U.S. 7th Fleet, and uh, especially as we have been able, as I said a little while ago, greatly improve the quality of the combat troops and uh, raise their morale. Well, would you have the strength to, to launch an, ev an invasion under present conditions? Uh, well, uh, that would depend upon how long the campaign would be. If we are certain of success within a limited period, we think we can with certain uh, increased help. If the campaign should uh, extend over a long period, then it uh, would depend upon many other factors, such as the general international situation. Well, what role has our Navy played in patrolling the waters between the mainland and uh, Formosa? It's been neutralizing those waters, so to speak, hasn't it? Hasn't that had the effect of making it unnecessary for the Chinese communists to hold large bodies of troops down there? Haven't they been able to divert those troops up to Korea and Manchuria and so on? Well, uh, I think... Uh, uh, I would call it a certainly a very interesting coincidence that ever since the Seventh Fleet was uh, stationed uh, there, the uh, communists have, have been withdrawing troops from the coastal provinces for facing Formosa and in sending them north to Korea. Dr. Ku, you of course are a distinguished student of the Orient. Uh, we've had several, uh, many uh, people on this program from Asia who've been there and representatives. We had the distinguished ambassador from Indonesia who told us today that Westerners uh, were not particularly welcome in Indonesia. Mr. Bullock told us that Westerners were not particularly welcome in India today. Now, is it true that one of the facts of our time 
is that there is a revolt against the West in Asia? Well, uh, basically, there is a very widespread latent feeling that the uh, Asiatic people should, run, should uh, be able to run their own affairs and should not be exploited. But that does not apply to the whole West, though. Well, now, let me ask you this. Uh, in your long and unsuccessful battle against the communists in China, were you, could you say that you were handicapped because your forces were generally uh, said to be the representatives or the friends of the West? Wasn't American friendship a real handicap to you in your battle with the communists in Asia? Well, yes, Mr. Huey. That was a great theme on the part of the communist propaganda, that uh, the, uh, uh, the nationalist China, the nationalist government and its officials and all the anti-communist uh, Chinese uh, were the running dogs of the United States. And, and, and you'll say that as a practical politician, it, it, it was a real handicap for you in, in trying to combat communism. Well, certainly it, that gave uh, the communists a pretext to, uh, to uh, so to speak, to fool the people. Yes, it was a very powerful weapon for the communists to exploit that anti-Western feeling among the Chinese. Now, sir, our audience, of course, uh, is, is well aware of the long missionary effort made by the West in China. When did the American missionary effort begin in China? At the beginning of the last century. Uh, so it went on for more than 100 years, did oh, it? For nearly about 150 years. And as a scholar, what would you say was the... Uh, how would you evaluate that effort? Well, personally, I would say that the, the, the service they rendered, the value of their service is really priceless because they did many things besides carrying the gospel to our people in the medical field, in the field of education, in the field uh, of science. They were the pioneers and, and now into contact with the West. Now, that, that long uh, and difficult effort has come to an end now, hasn't it? Uh, it's, uh, it's practically so, because the communist authorities are doing everything to destroy that contact. They've driven out all <laughs> the missionaries, and I believe they've recently driven out the Salvation Army, haven't yes, they? Yes, yes. Dr. Ku, I wanted to ask you about this so-called China lobby. Uh, you, of course, uh, uh, must be more aware than the rest of us of the charges that have been made recently, and uh, there's something that's been called a China lobby. Curiously enough, it isn't the Chinese communists that uh, this charge is brought against, but the Chinese nationalist government. And I'd like to, uh, or friends of that government, I'd like to ask whether you'd like to comment on these uh, odd charges. Well, Mr. Hathlett, I must be very frank. I personally do not know what the China lobby is, because I never uh, know that there any China lobby exists except that there is a Chinese communist lobby well, or the <coughs> international communist lobby. You're accused of defending your government. Is that <laughs> what the lobby amounts to? Well, I must plead guilty, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> well, now, doc Dr. Ku, uh, w this government of ours is still friendly to, to you, isn't it? It's still yes. giving you money. Yes. And, and what, to what extent, how much uh, uh, aid, dollar aid, are you getting from the United States this well, year? For the current fiscal year, it uh, uh, approximates $300 million. I including a military, economic aid, and what is called the impact uh, aid. Are you uh, getting aid? aid? Are you getting aid from any other nation in the world other than the United States? No, Mr. Huey. This is the only country that's been giving us right. aid. Is France, in effect, giving any aid by its forces and at all? No, Mr. It, it isn't. No. Well, how about this? Uh, qu are there any serious guerrilla forces on the mainland uh, fighting on your side or fighting the Chinese communists, whether they are uh, formally allied with the nationalist government or not? There are very substantial forces on the mainland, the guerrilla forces, you know. Uh, at least there are five, six regions where the guerrillas concentrate in the hills, in the mountains, in the woods. Fighting, uh, fighting the communist uh, authorities. Do they work together or do they work as independent bands, more or less? Uh, part of them, they are, co they, they are linked together. And Formosa keeps a very close contact with them all. If uh, rather regularly? Uh, fairly regularly, yes, yes. Well, do you make any sorties onto the mainland uh, at all? Are you able to do that at all? Well, we've been making what is called uh, raids. Well, we've been able 
uh, uh, occupy coastal towns, sometimes for 10 days, sometimes for fortnight, not with the idea of holding them permanently, but with the idea of giving supplies and to the uh, guerrilla forces. Well, Chiang Kai-shek offered to uh, bring his forces to uh, Korea to uh, fight against the Chinese communists there, didn't he? And that offer was refused, and that refusal still stands. Isn't that the situation? Yes, Hesler, that is so. Uh, Dr. Ku, yes. in your long battle, an unsuccessful battle against the communists, were there any surprises for you? Were you surprised at how rapidly the <coughs> communists took over China? Have there been any surprises for you as an individual, sir? Well, I, uh, I uh, personally, I think I've been surprised by the rapidity with which they have been able to uh, overrun the mainland. And, and the communists are destroying what was known as, co as Chinese culture, are they not? They're changing the nation completely, changing the attitudes of the people? Decidedly. Uh, they destroy even the very basic foundation of our society, the family. And as a final question, sir, uh, your, your, your principal a aim is to rescue China. How long do you think you have to rescue China or before the communists are able to completely change the character of the nation? Well, we hope we will be able to start on our uh, recovery of mainland program uh, before too long, before the communists are able to consolidate their position on the mainland. I see. Thank you, sir, very much for being with us. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Henry Hazlitt. Our distinguished guest was Dr. Wellington Koo, ambassador from China to the United States. The problem of manufacturing an article of extreme precision, such as a Longines watch, is to deliver it to its eventual owner in the same perfect condition that it leaves the factory. Now, for that reason, Longines watches have always been distributed directly from the factory through a limited number of jewelers, qualified by knowledge and experience to handle watches of Longines quality. These jewelers are our authorized Longines Whitnor jeweler agencies, and through them, you are assured that the Longines watch which you buy is a worthy representative of the only watch in history ever to win 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and highest honors for accuracy from the leading government observatories of the world. When next you buy a watch for yourself, for a favorite graduate, or any important occasion, see Longines, the world's most honored watch sold under our factory guarantee only at your authorized Longines Whitnor Jeweler Agency. Throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Wetnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Wetnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS Television Network.